Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, back with another review video. And of course, yes, continuing on, uh, now we've come to part two. And of course, with me, uh, my good friend Anchorman Anchorman. Hello there. Yep. So part two, our part two review of season three, three fingers, of uh, The Mandalorian. So uh, now we've come to uh episodes uh yeah chapter 20 and 21 22 episodes four five and six um yeah these were these were some pretty good episodes i don't know because like uh, from what i've been hearing like you know season three has been having mixed feelings or something like that mixed reviews um on some of the episodes like you know especially like in our last review like, how everybody felt on, uh, episode 3, chapter 19, and, um, you know, and apparently the, the same kind of goes for, uh, episode 6, but, you know, but, okay, so, uh, I mean, we'll start with, of course, obviously, episode 4, chapter 20, the founding, the founding, Den Djarin returns to his Mandalorian clan and lends his strength to combat a new and dangerous threat. Yeah, there's a lot that happens in this one because, you know, first off, um, you know, uh, for uh, what, for what, like this, like the one kid who uh, became Mandalorian at one point gets snatched by like that, like bird-like dino uh, dinosaur creature however how whatever you want whatever you want to call it and um you know the mandalorian's going after the the kid and um also we get more flashbacks of grogu's past like what what are the first things you have you have to say anchorman uh i think <clears throat> this episode started off kind of like a normal mandalorian episode but then when they get to the flashbacks, I just went, ooh, I can't wait to see that. And yeah. then we finally get it. Yeah. And uh, the dragon, uh, it was all right. It was like, I wonder if it's a dinosaur. Like, it could be, like, a, any creature. It kind of reminded me of creatures you see in, like, the Fallen Order game. I don't know if you played that, but that's where yeah. I'm getting the vibe from. I know about Fallen Order, but I've ne never played it. I have. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and so even like say we, it turns out that 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 kid is actually uh, Paz Vizla uh, Vizla's son. Which, okay, so if he's the dad, all right. But but yet who? But yet who's the mother? Like was she Mandalorian? Like it's hard to tell. I mean, I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I remember like I think my my mom and I were we were talking about that. I'm pretty sure it was me, and my mom, but I kind of can't remember. But with the flashbacks, like, this was my favorite part of the episode, where we get to see more of how Grogu survived and escaped Order 66 with the help of some of the Jedi, fighting off the clone troopers. And when Grogu makes his way into the elevator, and when he, um, you know, steps outside, well, uh, when the elevator doors open, we get the appearance of Ahmed Best, and, you know, he he's playing the same Jedi character that he played in that uh, Star Wars Jedi challenge game, you know, for the, pa you know, for the Padawans and so on. And that that was pretty cool, don't you think? Yeah, it was a game show. I think I've only saw a little bit of it. Yeah, and I can't, I can't, I think it's only on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. I don't recall yeah. seeing, I don't, I don't recall seeing it on Disney Plus. I but, think it was like a show for that kids could watch if they don't have Disney Plus. Yeah, probably so. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's really cool that Ahmed Best, a.k.a. Jar Jar Binks, he gets to play, he, he's playing, like, a live-action character, and, again, the same Jedi that he played in that uh, Star Wars Jedi Challenge game. That's really cool that, you know, making his making his, his, his character officially d canon to star wars um and so he's the one yes. he's the one that helps out grogu escape and they meet up with um a N naboo shuttle and some naboo guards and yeah that was pretty cool and of course you know uh kellerin Be beck if i'm saying the full name right of ahmed bestest character um 
you know, him and Grogu, they they escape and they fly on the Naboo uh, shuttle. And that was that was it. And to me, that was like, uh, uh, I want more. I want more of the of Grogu's flashbacks. Like, what what's going to happen next? Like, where do they go next? That's the whole thing. I'm not sure. Yeah, I know. Okay. If we and if we get in season four. Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully there will be more in season four. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. My but, big question is, I just want to know what happened to Ahmed Best's character. Yeah, but I'm sure they'll establish that at some point. Um, he looks pretty cool with his lightsabers. I did like that scene where he takes down every clone, and he's he's like confident. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Um, so if that with the flashbacks happening, you know, uh, cut back to like say, oh, that's another thing too, because I think at this point, um, the armorer that's 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 what she goes by. Like she's kind of uh, ar- knighting. Grogu, I want to say, in the Order of the Mandalorians. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, giving giving Grogu a Mandalorian symbol, so... I think she gives him armor. Kind of, yeah. I mean, for, for, his, for his age and how small he is, so... Um, and so, with the Mandalorians, like, saving, uh, as of now, we find out, it's pa- Paz Vizsla's son... Like they do succeed, and even like say, um, the the mother like bird, you know, at one point falls into the water and gets snatched by that uh, that like gator creature, you know. I don't remember that. that okay, part, but I remember they she the the thing does get defeated. Yeah, to me that kind of. I, I don't know, like, it kind of reminds me of, like, something from Jurassic World with the Mosasaurus, like, I don't know, but, um, and, like, the the question was, like, what was gonna happen with the babies, and the Mandalorians take in the babies, and obviously they would, like, take care of them and train them, and they would, they would have them be, like, their, like, set of wings, you know, flying, I guess you could say. I wonder how they fit in that shuttle, the Mandalorian shuttle. Uh huh. Yeah, that's true. Like they managed to fit in. That's that's the thing. Um, it must been crowded. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that episode was pretty good um, for what was like what was going on. And not to mention, this episode was directed by Carl Weathers, which that was really that's cool. cool. It was cool, absolutely. Apollo Creed directing Star Wars. Yep. And now. Come to um, episode 5, chapter 21, The Pirate. Uh, Description. Grief learns of a pirate attack on Navarro and urges the New Republic to intervene. As the fate of Navarro hangs in the balance, Din Djarin rely on new and old teammates to save the planet. This was another pretty good one because, well, it's at this point where the pirates, uh, they definitely strike on Navarro, attacking the city of Navarro, you know, the Navarro city, and, um, you know, the leader of the pirates, like, looks like, you know, like half a, a seaweed creature, like, you know completely, like, just invading and attacking, and that basically gets everybody from the city of Navarro to evacuate, and... Does he want revenge? Yeah, he, yeah, revenge. And Grief, Grief Cargo just, uh, you know, sending out a distress call, and we get, we once again get the appearance of Captain Carson uh, Teva, and uh, who's been, who's appeared in a lot in all three seasons of The Mandalorian, and like he he receives the distress call from Grief Karga, and um, at one point, surprise surprise, we get the appearance uh, of Zeb. Like literally, he just came out out of nowhere. Like we like this was totally unexpected, but hey, it was still cool to finally. I thought it was just a random Assad character, but no, it's Zeb. No, because. You would know if it was Zeb, like the look of his face and especially his voice. So he's a pilot now. Yeah, yeah. He's voiced by Steve Bloom, so that's how you knew. Yep, and St- yep, Steve Bloom once again reprising the role of Zeb, rightfully so. And um, even like, say, we get the appearance of those uh, of those uh, X-wing pilots. They're just there at that like um, new Re- like New Republic uh, 
Canteen or whatever it is, and um, Cantina. yeah, Cantina. Tapper Wolf and Trapper Wolf, I should say. Jib Dodger and uh, Sash Ketter, played by the 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 ma three Mandalorian directors, Dave Filoni, Rick uh, Famua, if I'm saying that right, and Deborah Chow. And it's pretty cool, and it makes sense. Trapper Wolf, being played by Dave Filoni, wearing a cowboy-like hat. Because why not? Because that's that's Dave... cowboy hats. What's that now? Dave Filoni loves cowboy hats. Yeah, and that's what makes it's him... strange about one. That's what makes him Dave Filoni. Yes. Yeah. And that's when, like, uh, Captain Carson, like, goes to Coruscant, and we get the appearance of uh, Tim Meadows as Colonel Tuttle. I'm not, I mean, I, I know a little bit of Tim Meadows, but I remember, I remember watching, uh, I, I, I've seen reaction videos to this episode, and some of the reactors were just, like, very surprised and, you know, excited to see Tim Meadows in The Mandalorian. And I understand, like, he's a well-known uh, comedic actor, and, um, hey, you know, pretty cool that he's now in the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. Um, and things kind of don't work out because, like, Captain Carson telling the colonel about, uh, you know, Navarro and trouble and so on. Even, of course, we once again get the appearance of, uh, what's-her-face? Um, yeah, Ella. You know, like, she's, she's there, and things, there's, a, like, a heated moment between Carson and, and uh, Ella, and um, that's when... Carson, he proceeds on to ask Den Djarin for help, and it kind of doesn't go well at first, especially for the Mandalorians. Like, they'd have to find a new hiding location, and not to mention, R5 was involved in this. I wonder how they found him. Well, I mean, I think it's, again, it's it, it's because of R5, so... They, I guess they just tracked him, because he's a droid. And he's a, he's a rebel spy, so... R5's a rebel spy? Yeah, that's that's what the that's what the episode establishes, and according uh, according, I thought he was just a tracker or something. Kind of, but still a spy, and according to uh, Carson, um, and that's when you know uh, the Mandalorians and Den Djarin, they do come to terms, and not to mention Den Djarin even mentioned that you know that uh, the captain like um, like uh, spared his neck or something like that, you know. A couple of times, and um, you know, Den Djarin returning the favor, and not to mention help it, you know, Den Djarin helping his friend Grief Karga. So yeah, why wouldn't he? And even like say Paz Vizsla, like giving a a good speech, you know, and of course he's he does want to help, and that's what happens because all the Mandalorians they go to Navarro and they take on the pirates, and even say um, the armorer, yeah, she joins in, of course, like. She wants a bit of action and fighting of her own, taking down the pirates. And, um, and of course, you know, Den Djarin and Bo-Katan, and yeah, didn't talk, didn't, uh, talk about Bo-Katan that much in, in this, that, uh, her and Den Djarin in their fighter ships, I guess you could say, taking, yes. taking on the pirates. And even at one point, one of the main, like, pirates chickens out and ditches the captain. Remember that? I think so. Does he get shot down? Or he survived? The 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 main pirate captain, like I meant the guy who, who ditched them. Oh no, he does survive. He 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 oh. run, he basically flees, so he, he's lucky. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll see him again if he has something up his sleeves, like I don't know. He might. Yeah. But the squid uh, guy dies, I'm pretty sure. What's that now? The squid guy yeah, the, the, the leader of the pirates, like the seaweed like creature, like he, he looks like he looks like half seaweed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like at one point, yeah, because his ship is taken down and crashes, and that's the end for him. Uh, Goran Shard, yeah, that's his name. Um, oh, cool. And uh, oh gosh, I have to. Do you the, the those pig creatures? Do you remember the name of those pig like alien creatures? The pirates? Well, the pigs, you know, the pig-like creatures, you know, and it says, I have spoken. Not sure. But you uh, don't remember? Not... Well, that them. One of them was a, was a pirate and part of Goran Shard's crew members. 
I just feel like mentioning this. I one of the reaction videos that I've watched, uh, one of them pointed out that like, like reminded them of like say, um, you know, Mister Smee and Captain Hook. And actually, you know what? Kind of, I can kind of see that. Maybe they got ins inspiration for it. Maybe so, but. Uh, of course, all ends well. Navarro is safe, and uh, the pirates being defeated. All those surviving pirates, like they're being, like they're being gun pointed at. And of course, you know, there's nothing that they can do. Um, they surrender. Of course, and then a little bit later, because uh, well, the armorer has a chat with Bo-Katan and tells her to remove her helmet, and for a good reason. I mean, you know. She like she wants Bo-Katan to bring in uh, more, uh, I guess you could say, ex Mandalorians. And besides, as uh, and as the armorer says, you know, she's part of both worlds. Like you know, with and without her helmet, I guess you could say. So I almost thought the armorer was gonna take off her helmet, but she didn't. Maybe she's learning. Yeah, that know. you've got a good point. Like she's learning. That's right. She's not relying on her cult-like ways. She's starting to see other Mandalorians in their ways as well. Exactly. How they run their tribe. You have a good point. And yes. um, I, uh, maybe at some point, like, you know, we've never seen her face before, but maybe at some point we will. And I think, and especially, we're going to see Din Djarin's face again. No doubt about it. I hope so. Yeah. And right before the episode ends, well, we get one more scene, and that's when Captain Carson um, tracks a um, drifting, destroy, uh, like partly damaged, destroyed, uh, you know, um, Imperial shuttle, and uh, and basically like the R two unit that's on his X wing, um, you know. What's really cool, like, this is probably, like, this is an upgrade for the uh, astromech droids. Like, those things that stick out, like, actually can d uh, detach, and it floats. And mm -hmm. basically, um, uh, Moff Gideon uh, sir, escaped. And, um, yeah, and basically, uh, there are so many, like, theories for now, like if he was taken by Mandalorians, or if it was the, you know, ex-Mandalorians that took him. There are so many theories for now as to if the Mandalorians, like, ex-Mandalorians, whatever, if he was taken by them and, like, they were going to punish him their way, you know, just... Yeah, wasn't he on death row? I'm pretty sure, I, I, I think so. As um, revealed in the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, maybe, so... It's been I a think... I think this is Moff Gideon's plan. He probably planned to get captured and then get set free. Probably. the Mandalorians. Probably so, and... So they can make them look bad or something? Exactly, and be framed. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was a pretty good episode. And now, finally, we come to, uh... Episode 6, Chapter 22... Yeah, this one has been getting, like, um, mixed feelings, and... I have not reviewed this episode yet. Okay, but you have seen it, of course. Yes. Okay. But, yeah, okay. Episode 22, Guns for Hire. So, what happens in this episode is, uh, let me see, okay. Uh, description. The Mandalorian visits an, uh, oplet, uh, world. I hope I said that right. In search of a more lurk lurkative line of work. Yeah, because in this one, uh, well, this was the first episode of season three to be directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, and um, in this one, because, like, um, in search of, like, you know, the X Mandalorians and I should say, you know, the Death Watch, because that's what they were called in with Bo Katan. Well, like, in the opening to that episode, like, it starts off with the Death Watch slash Mandalorians, like, they have, uh, they have their own, like, imp like, Imperial ship, and they're yes. basic, and they're basically, like, um, they're bringing in, like, a, a calamari, um. Maybe they stole the ship. Yeah, probably, but, like, this calamari who I, I don't know, like, I, like, 
is supposed to be a prince, I want to say? I don't know, but doesn't want to go back to this uh, planet, and, you know... I think his... they're just lovers. Yeah, lovers, and, like, uh, the Quarian captain, that's, that's, uh, that's what, that's what they're called, like, the Quarian captain and the Mon Calamari, uh, n nobleman, uh, like, they're, they're both lovers, and the Death Watch just, just supposed to take in the Calamari, and he just, he doesn't want to leave his true love and so on, and, uh, that's pretty much it, like, I don't think they've established what happens next, like, we just have that and that's it, but, um, Weren't those one of the creatures in, like, season two or something? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure. I think, they, yeah. They I think... show in, like, the flash forward or whatever previously on Mandalorian. I think so, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So with that out of the way, well, uh, Den Djarin and Bo-Katan making their way to this planet that actually is a pretty nice planet. Like, you know, all the townspeople are very, like, all the citizens of this uh, society. And not to mention, the the captain and the, the duchess, well, uh, we get, a, like, a couple of cameos we get in this episode. Like, one of them, I knew he was going to be appearing in season three. Um... And these other two had no idea that they were showing up. We got Jack Black and Lizzo. They're, like, Jack Black being Captain Bombarder and Lizzo as the Duchess. Like, that was a total surprise. Yeah. And I never thought Jack Black would be in uh, Star Wars. Me neither. Like, he, he was just in the Mario movie. Yeah, exactly. Not to now mention... he's randomly in The Mandalorian. Yeah, not to mention that this episode. And, uh, who's Lizzo again? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know who that is. Is it like an actress? Or I something? yeah, pretty yeah, I think so. But what I was gonna say was this episode uh, being out the same day as uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. So yes, there you go. And it's like the kids will just see the Mandalorian and go, "Oh, Jack Black, he's in the Mario movie." Yeah, exactly. There you go. Um, and so you know. Even, like, say, Grogu, he actually quickly bonds, just like that, with the captain and the duchess, and... He um, Yeah, exactly. He can... Se he sensed right away that they, they can be trusted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And basically, like, this society, like, these, like, uh, these droids, like, old droids, like, from the, the old Republic, like, the Separatist days, the Clone Wars... Like, these droids are serving and helping and assisting these people. And um, also, Commissioner Hellgate, uh, Hellgate, if I'm saying that right, played by the one and only Christopher Lloyd, a.k.a. Doc Brown. This is where he, this is where he appears in Season 3 of The Mandalorian. Um, and he's basically, like, isn't he 80 in real life? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's in his he's 80s. He's still going strong. He is still going strong, definitely. So, uh, as I said, he's the commissioner, and, like, they apparently keep watch on all the droids that are serving the the, the people, and there have been reports that, uh, you know, the droids have been malfunctioning and something hasn't been going right. And that's when, like, you know, um, Den Djarin and, um, and Bo-Katan, like... They meet with, uh, you know, those those pig creatures, you know, and the Ugnaughts. The what now? The Ugnaughts. The Ugnaughts. That's right. The Ugnaughts. Jeez. And uh, they meet with the Ugnaughts, and the only way they can they can get their attention is by saying, you know, I have spoken. That's their like language and what they say. I have spoken. And talking about say the droids that are malfunctioning, and they are they're unaware of this, and they claim that there's nothing wrong with them. But you know, the thing is, they haven't been up, uh, like, on the, like, landscape and such for, for quite a while, because they've been underground working on the droids. And that's, yeah. yeah, and that's when, like, we see, uh, like, say, the battle droids, like, during, like, the Separatist days, and, like, we get the appearance of, uh, you know, the BB-1 droid, yeah, B-1 droid. We and, haven't seen one since Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, what's that now? We haven't seen a B-1 battle droid in live action since Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, but the other but the other battle droids, like that first that first debuted in Attack of the Clones, 
We saw them make an appearance like in a flashback of season one of The Mandalorian. Yes. Um, but you're right, yeah. I think, yeah, this is the first time we've seen a B1 droid in like in something live action since Revenge of the Sith. Um, and once again, Matthew Wood voicing the battle droids. And, that's relieving. What's that? That's that's like relieving. Like it's nice to hear Matthew Wood still voicing the, the battle droids. Of course. He's definitely the voice of the droids and General Grievous. Yeah. So, yeah, the the one B one uh series droid, uh like telling them about uh like the the droid the battle droids and so on, and even at one point like Den Jaron trying to get their attention, and even the B1 droids telling them, you know, I wouldn't do that if I were you, and, you know, Den Djarin, he's still, like, taking the risk and kicking them, and when he def he definitely kicks one very hard, and that just triggers the battle droids, sets him off, and he just starts running, and that's when, yeah, Den Djarin, Bo-Katan, they're chasing him through the, through the city, and when they finally, you know, take down the droid. It reminded me of the chase in Attack of the Clones, where they go to like we see like the the cantinas and like bars of and and of the, Attack the, of the Clones and the and the bounty hunter hired a uh, Zam. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I kind of now that you say it, uh, probably so. Yeah, a little bit of it, like just like say the part where you know Zam and Anakin they're running through like the the town. I got a course on Underworld vibe from it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. And then, like, one sequence where, you know, Den Djarin and Bo-Katan, they're in this uh, uh, b uh, droid bar, basically, for droids. And, you know, we see a lot of more B-1 droids. We see a lot of, uh, like, astromechs. Um, and also the same, like, droid types, like uh, Captain Rex from Star Tours. Yeah, those droids. Um, and the bartender droid talking about the droids and how, you know, they they are still fully programmed and capable of, of doing many other things, you know, and uh, the bartender droid actually being voiced by uh, Seth Gable, um, yeah, which, uh, yeah, that's uh, Bryce Dallas, ha that's Bryce Dallas Howard's uh, husband, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that, that, that is pretty cool. So, yep, that's right. Uh, her husband uh, voice having a part in an episode of uh, The Mandalorian. Pretty cool. She probably asked him to be in it. Yeah, probably so. So, like, hey, honey, want to want to voice a droid? <sighs> yeah. But anyways, and at one point, um, they try and like find out like who's responsible for all these droids having these problems, and it turns out it's the commissioner. And we find out that the commercial the the commissioner was, uh, has been, uh, a separatist, and even mentioning Count Dooku, which that was really nice cool. Nice reference. I know, yeah. And, of course, the commissioner gets what, what, what he deserves, uh, you know, for all the trouble he's caused, and, you know, um, he, he, of course, like, does apologize to the captain and duchess, and even say the captain, Captain Bomberder, like, he used to be part of the Empire, but, of course, he changed his ways, um, and so the commissioner being exiled, and then, you know, afterwards, um, you know, saying their goodbyes to Den Djarin and uh, Bo-Katan, and not to mention the Duchess knights Grogu. Do you remember that part? Yeah, I wasn't sure about that part. I couldn't tell what they were knighting him for. Yeah, oh well. But, you know, they really liked him, so, you know. That's probably why. Yeah, and and it was funny, like, not to mention, like, Grogu helped the Duchess, like, cheat at, like, a croquet game thing, you know. Okay. That's what my, that's what my, that's what, that's what, rem that's what my mom thought of. Like, it kind of reminded her of the croquet game, like, in Alice in Wonderland, so. Yeah, yeah. it's an old game. Exactly. Do you play croquet, as the Queen of Hearts says? Um... Afterwards, Den Djarin and Bo-Katan, the last uh, sequence of the episode where they find the ex-Mandalorians slash Death Watch, and that, that's basically what they are, too. Um, we, of course, get the returning appearance of, like, say, Axe Wolves, played by Simon K Kazensides. I don't, even, I don't even know how you pronounce his last name. I apologize. Um, and uh, Koska Reeves, uh, being played by WWE wrestler Sasha Banks. 
Um, basically, because Axe Wolves is... At this point, he's like, gosh, he's a jerk in this. In, in this. And challenging Bo-Katan to, you know, man, to a Mandalore fight. And that's when, you know, like even Axe Wolves is um, telling her that, you know, only, only the one, only the one who wields the dark saber leads the group, basically. And that's when Din Djarin does hand the dark saber to Bo-Katan. She now wields it and is, and now is the leader of the ex-Mandalorians. And thus, you know, they will be, they will be, um, Mandalorians once again, so... Uh, could I say my thoughts on that scene? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, like, I thought it was a cool scene. We're seeing all the Mandalorian tools they use, like the flamethrower, the shield thing. Yep. And, like, you just feel like it's a Mandalorian fight. I feel like my issue with the Bo-Katan have, not having the Darksaber, I just feel it kind of just doesn't really make sense to me. I just, like... Because Din got defeated by that creature, he think, he now thinks he got defeated. And mm -hmm. now, because he was defeated, Bo-Katan can now have the Darksaber. Like, I feel like there could have been, like, another way. Like, she could have gotten the Darksaber. Yeah. But, uh, oh, well, I guess that's how it went. Uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. But, yeah. Those, ep the, the last, okay, so the last three episodes, um episodes um four five and six the founding the pirate and guns for hire they were some pretty good episodes and oh almost forgot to mention that in episode uh five that uh you know the armorer like thought it was that it was just legends of that um that um the symbol of mandalore you know the like underwater creature but you know she believed, like, she apparently does believe in Bo-Katan and that, you know, she and Din Djarin, they witnessed it, so. Maybe. Yeah, so, probably, like, maybe so, but. Yeah, I thought that these episodes were pretty good, and gosh, hard to believe, only two episodes left. Of... That's crazy. I know! It feels like, it... I've said this, like, it feels like season three had just begun, and we're down to two more. I remember after season two ended, I was just waiting for season three, and now it's already here. It's already almost over. I know, I know. Time flies. It, You're having fun. You you said it right there. Um, mm -hmm. But any last any last things to say on uh, episodes four or five and six, and if you enjoyed them uh, and so on? Uh, I don't think they're the best episodes of The Mandalorian. I think they're fun. Yeah. But... But, like, I'm just trying to figure out where the story's going to go. I just hope they get answered the, the last two episodes. And I'm curious what is next in store if they do season four. That's true, yeah. But for me, I thought these episodes were pretty good and, you know, look forward to the last two. Yes. Yep. Well, once again, Anchorman, it was, you know, it was great to have you for, uh, you know, the part two review of season three. You're welcome. Yep. Thank you for having me on. Anytime. And, you know, what about you guys? What did you think of uh, the last three episodes? And what did you think of our review? Leave comments and give this review a like as always. And um, want to go ahead and say goodbye? Goodbye. He says that for me. We hope you've enjoyed our uh, part two review of season three of The Mandalorian. More reviews coming your way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward. And we'll see you guys in the next video slash review. Take care, and until our third and final review of Season 3 of The Mandalorian, peace out, and may the Force be with you. Always.